This has been Peter, VKAZZ, WIA Director and Secretary. This is Editor-in-Chief of Amateur Radio Magazine, Roger Harrison, VK2ZRH. You should be receiving the latest edition of Amateur Radio Magazine, issue 3 for 2022, in mailboxes and newsagents from late last week. As foreshadowed, the theme for the issue is Homebrew Hacks and Hints. So, to continue this line from the few items I highlighted last week, we have Building an Automatic Tuner for a Magnetic Loop Antenna by John Forrest, VK3 Juliet November Foxtrot, VK3 JNF. John built his own version of the Plastic Fantastic Magnetic Loop Antenna Project by Jim Tregellis, VK5 Juliet Sugar Tango, VK5 JST, published in the September 2017 issue of Out Radio. Just to remind you, that mag loop was made from a length of laminated plastic gas pipe from Bunnings and featured a very innovative trombone tuning capacitor formed from the gas pipe. To tune his Plastic Fantastic Mark II, John, VK 3 jnf used a stepper motor rather than the geared motor described in the original design. To drive his tuning motor, John tells the story of how he adapted kits found online and achieved success. Speaking of antennas, the key to every successful ham station, this issue, we begin a four-part series on antenna modelling using free, yes, free software. Written by Michael Barbera and Gregory Mew, VK4 Golf Romeo Mike, VK4GRM, the modelling software is known as 4NEC2. That's Figure 4 November Echo Charlie Figure 2. 4NEC2. It is a powerful and widely respected application. Part 1 this issue introduces the concept of antenna modelling and describes a variety of the packages available. Part 2 in issue 4 will show you where to get the 4NEC2 software and provide a review of how to model a simple dipole. Parts 3 and 4 will look at HF and VHF antenna examples and show how they can be optimised, slowly introducing you to the software's more advanced features in a practical way. Returning to the hardware, this issue, Lou De Stefano VK3 Alpha Quebec Zulu VK3 AQZ completes his wide range RF power meter project. Hands up those who have broadband delivered to your home by NBN Co, the government owned company building Australia's broadband telecommunication network across the nation. A few communications ministers ago, in the federal government, it was proposed that to save huge expense, the nation's broadband network wouldn't connect fibre all the way to home premises. Instead, the fibre network would reach out to boxes in the street, known as nodes, and the last bit would use the existing twisted pair copper wires of the old dial-up analogue telephone service, known as fibre to the node, or FTTDN. In apartment blocks, fibre could be installed to the basement, or FTTB. A technology known as Very High Speed Digital Subscriber Line, VDSL, delivers your broadband service via those twisted pair copper wires. Basically, it's low level RF from 25kc to 17.6 megs. There's the rub. That spans a bunch of popular amateur bands, and amateur transmissions can cause interference, and vice versa. In March, NBN Co published on its website a document titled Mitigating Amateur Radio Interference to VDSL2. This created some chatter on the air and across social media. So, we had WIA Spectrum Strategy Committee members Phil Waite, VK2Alpha Sierra Delta, VK2ASD, and Dale Hughes, VK1Delta Sierra Hotel, VK1DSH, take a look at it. They reviewed NBN's document and found it um, wanting in several places. We give you the skinny on the matter in issue 3. Our cover story gives a rundown on a soon to be released ICOM rig for the 2.4 and 5.7 gigs bands. ICOM is moving beyond 1296 megs. We also give you a DIY solar electric boat. Newcomer's notebook on diodes, another VHF UHF column, this issue covering 3D printing hacks and hints, and the Meteor Scatter Report highlighting the big six meteor showers in VK. 
Another Alara column, this issue introducing Michelle, VK2Alpha Yankee Lima, VK2AYL, to be Alara's next president. Plus, a book review on the Flying Doctor story, 1928 to 1978. Written and authorised by Roger Harrison, VK2, ZRH for VK1WIA, Gold Coast, Queensland. Sorry, wrong script. Never mind. Back to you, BB. Thanks, Roger. In ACMA News, the Australian Communications and Media Authority has made a fee calculator available to help find what the ACMA is calling the most cost-efficient licence option for amateurs and holders of other radio licences. The ACMA has said that the calculator will receive regular updates with respect to pricing and other options. The fee shown is best available, but plenty of disclaimers on their site and reminders to use and check your normal supplier. Now, international news with Jason, Victor Kilo 2, Lima Alpha Whiskey. Hello. In news from Region 1, IARU MS Newsletter suggests possible jammers on 7 and 14 MHz. IARU Monitoring System Region 1 Newsletter reports stations transmitting with a bandwidth of 8 kHz in the 7 and 14 MHz amateur radio bands. Among the intruders operating regularly on our band's radars were, once again, in terms of number, duration and power of their emissions, the most damaging intrusions, followed by FSK, CIS-type transmissions and other military modes. They also received some pirate emissions, mostly in the 10 metre band, in addition to the annoying transmissions of several broadcasting stations in the 40 metre band. German Radio Hams plan to use GSM GPRS technology. German radio amateurs have been given a grant of almost 400,000 Australian dollars, 249,424 euros by ARDC to develop software that will allow the use of GSM GPRS technology on amateur radio bands. Open Source Mobile Communications, Osmocom, is an umbrella project fiscally sponsored by the Deutsche Amateur Radio Club that hosts, develops and maintains mobile communications and SDR open source projects with a main focus on cellular telephony systems. Osmocom identified a gap between the last decade of very promising open source developments in cellular technology and the requirements of being able to use this in the context of amateur radio. This grant will be used to develop software that will allow the use of GSM GPRS technology on amateur radio bands. Organisers in the UK are preparing for a summer camping festival they describe as, quote, a temporary village of geeks, crafters and technology enthusiasts, end quote. 2,000 people or more are expected at electromagnetic field which will bring technology, scientific curiosity and a special event amateur radio station to East Nor Castle Deer Park in Herefordshire. The volunteer-run not-for-profit event is taking place between the 2nd and 5th of June and includes an amateur radio village, Golf X-Ray 1 Echo Mike Foxtrot and AMSAT UK village, Golf Bravo 4 Echo Mike Foxtrot. In addition to speakers and workshops on everyone's favourite tech to picks, there will also be music and other entertainments. The event is held every two years. IARU Region 1 Interim Meeting in June. Norway's body NRRL reports the IARU Region 1 Interim Meeting will take place during the Ham Radio Fair in Friedrichshafen. These interim meetings are preparatory meetings held the year before the ordinary IARU Region 1 conference and the main purpose of the meeting is to prepare matters that are urgent and or are of greater scope. For this year's interim meeting in Friedrichshafen, NRRL has submitted two agenda items, global harmonisation of the 1.8 MHz band with a view to proposing for the upcoming WRC 2023 to provide Region 1 in line with Regions 2 and 3 full access in the frequency range of 1800 to 1810 kHz as well as to remove power limitation in the upper part of the band at 1850 to 2000 kHz which is currently 10 watts. NRRL seeks international supporters on this matter. In news from Region 2, Brazilian lawmakers have passed a tough new law limiting RF interference from solar panels. 
This important step in the containment of solar panel RFI took effect on the 2nd of May. The ordinance governs the generation, conditioning and storing of electricity in photovoltaic systems. The move by Brazil's National Institute of Meteorology and Quality was hailed by amateur radio operators, including members of the Spectrum Management and Defence Group of Labre, the Brazilian National Amateur Radio Group. The Brazilian organisation provided guidance and feedback to the National Institute with the help of the Electromagnetic Compatibility Coordinator of the IARU and the ARRL. And in news from Region 3, ham radio used illegally on tour boat that sank. A Japanese tour boat that sank last month, killing 11 of the 26 people on board, was making use of amateur radio illegally as one of its main communications methods, according to a report in one of Japan's main daily newspapers and the story picked up by Amateur Radio Newsline. Japan's Radio Act forbids the use of amateur radio for profit-making purposes, but according to a report on the Mainichi Shimbun news site, the Yazoo I tour boat relied often on ham radio to communicate with the office, other tour operators and other ships. The boat sank in northern Japanese waters. The news account said that it was believed that the captain of the boat was unable to send a signal on his mobile phone and the onboard satellite phone was broken. The news report said that another cell phone was used to summon help but did not identify who it belonged to. Anyone found guilty of violation of the Radio Act faces a possibility of as much as one year in prison or a fine of 1 million yen, the equivalent of about 11,000 Australian dollars. For VK1 WIA National News in Sydney, I'm Jason, VK2LAW. This is the home service of the Wireless Institute of Australia through VK1 WIA. Now operational news with Felix, VK4 FUQ. Hello there. Yes, now contest wise 2022. VK Shires contest 11 June. WIA VHF UHF field days winter. 0200 hours UTC Saturday 25 June through 0159 hours UTC Sunday 26 June. Debbers for the Western Australians VK6. IAAU HF World Championship next contest is July 9 and 10. WIA Trans Tasman Low Band Contest, 16 July. The Trans Tasman Contest held on the third weekend in July aims to encourage low band activity between VK and ZL. RSGB IOTA Contest is July 30, 31. WIA RD or Remembrance Day Contest weekend closes the 15th of August each year. So next is Saturday, Sunday, August 13 and 14. WIA NZIRT Oceania Contest. Phone, first full weekend in October, 0600 hours UTC Saturday to 0600 hours UTC Sunday. CW, second full weekend in October, 0600 hours UTC Saturday to 0600 hours UTC Sunday. Log deadline for all logs, 31st October. Next contests are fast approaching and here joining me is VK3 FUR, Mikala. CQ Pride, a contest celebrating diversity in amateur radio, is right around the corner. Join amateurs in celebrating Pride Month this year by entering the CQ Pride contest on the 4th and 5th of June. CQ Pride aims to be a relaxed contest for all modes and all non wark bands, making it perfect for small clubs and newcomers. Use of sats, repeaters, internet links is permitted. For full rules and more information, see Pride Radio dot group slash contest. I've been Michaela, VK3FUR for Pride Radio Group. New Worldwide Digital Contest will go June 4-6. DX Window. The Ecuador DX Club will operate special event station HD1E from Quito tomorrow, Monday, May 23rd and Tuesday, May 24th. The Hams are celebrating Ecuador's Bicentennial Independence Day, which is May 24. All HF bands using all the usual modes. QSL Virella TW. 
A free commemorative diploma will be available for all successful contacts. Other hams in Ecuador who are members of the HCDX group have been using the call sign HD200BP since May the 1st from Quito and will continue until the end of May. They are commemorating the 200th anniversary of the Battle of Pichincha. Look with them on the HF bands using SSB and FT8, FT4. QSL via EC5R, Italy. Members of the 4U1 GSC group from the United Nations Global Service Centre in Brindisi are QRB with special call 4U9MAY and 4U1 GSC until May 31 to commemorate International Day of UN Peacekeepers. Activities on 160 to 10 metres, QSL via 9A2AA. Rayner will be using the call sign TO2AZ from Basadere Island, Guadeloupe between May 27 and June 10. Rayner will operate 40 to 10 metres including 30, 17 and 12 metres using CW and SSB. QSL to his home call DL2AAZ. JB0YU is on the air from Mongolia until the 10th of June on the HF and VHF UHF bands using CW, SSB and FT8 in de-expedition mode. QSL via RW6HS. VK90 ABC, an Aussie station celebrating 90 years of the national broadcaster and is operating all year. Speaking of ABC, the newsroom did receive a note from Simon through the week to what he called was a good news story. Again, I do remind everyone don't just send links and URLs, but take the time to write and voice your suggested item in the manner you'd expect to hear it back on an upcoming news service. For VK1 WIA National News, I'm Felix VK4 FUQ Enningham. No, you haven't tuned the ether stirrer. This is the official VK Ham News from the one VK1 WIA. Marconi's first radio broadcast made 125 years ago. This article from Jonathan Holmes is with thanks to BBC News. This is John Knox, VK4FJRK, and this is Rewind. Rewind. It was an experiment that saved hundreds of lives and changed the way the world talks forever. 13th of May, 1897. Guglielmo Marconi sent the world's first radio message across open water, and he did it while visiting a seaside resort in Somerset in the United Kingdom. Marconi came to Western Supermare looking to experiment with what he called telegraphy without wires, known to us now, of course, as radio. He was initially interested in contacting ships, but his work led to a communications revolution. It paved the way for the radio and television broadcasts that we take for granted today. In 1896, Marconi had come to the UK to conduct his experiments after failing to get interest in his work from the Italians. His assistant, George Kemp, was from Cardiff and suggested the Bristol Channel would be the perfect place to uh, test it out. Marconi's team placed a transmitter on Flat Home, an island halfway across the channel, and began sending messages out into the airwaves. And, on the 13th of May, the instruments rang out with a clear spark. Marconi sent a message of, Can you hear me? Which was received loud and clear. Immediately, the team travelled back to Brim Down Fort, just south of Western Superbury, and set up again. A further message was sent, a distance of nearly 10 miles, a record at the time. Two months after his Western experiments, Marconi set up the Wireless Telegraph and Signal Company Limited, which was one of the six founders of the British Broadcasting Company in 1922. Its first London station was called 2LO and broadcast from Marconi House, the headquarters of Marconi's company. My time is up. I'm John Knox, VK4FJRK, and this has been Rewind. This is the home service of the Wireless Institute of Australia 
through VK1WIA. Now, special interest group news with Bruce, VK3 Triple F. And a very good day to you. Worldwide special interest group news, CW. From the land of the long white cloud comes straight key night, winter edition. The SKN will be held on Sunday, the 12th of June, from 8pm to 9pm on 80 metres. SKN is not a contest, but it is a great chance to dust off that straight key and let us hear what it can do. Worldwide Special Interest Group's Final Frontier. Meet some of the oldest undead spacecraft that are still going strong. Not all the dead stuff in space is junk. Some are true gems. Believe it or not, according to the Index of Objects Launched into Outer Space Maintained by the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs, there were 7,389 individual satellites orbiting our little green planet at the end of April last year, 2021. Others placed the number closer to 6,500. This number is only set to increase over time, with some estimates coming in at around 990 satellites being added to the mix every single year. Worldwide Special Interest Group's IOTA NA085 Bruce K5TEN, who usually activates Dog Island, WWLOCEL79 every year in June as K4D is active this year between May 16th and 26th. Dog Island USI FL005S WWLOC EL79 Florida is an extremely rare iota because access is controlled by the 25 or so homeowners on the island. There are no hams on the island and the only activations have been done by Bruce over the last nine years. Access is by permission only and permission by one of the homeowners. It is only accessible by private charter or single-engine fixed-wing aircraft and by charter boat. The airstrip is overgrown, so private charter is the only real choice. There are no streets, roads, stop signs, trendy cafes or beachfront bars. If you need it, you bring it. This year's activity will only be on 40 to 6 metres, primarily on CW, SSB and FM on 7010, 7110-10110-14027.5, 21027.5, 28010kHz, SSB, 7185 14260 21285 and 28310 kilohertz. QSL via K5TEN, SACE required for stateside and DX, DX1 USDs required. Also, QSL via the Bureau or eQSL is best. See qrz.com or make QST for more details. Worldwide Special Interest Group, Military and Things That Go Bang in the Night. An interesting note picked up from our Kiwi friends in the NZ Art comes all the way from Western Australia. Robert. Vice President of the Perth VHF Group, reminding the ZLs 2023 is the 80th anniversary of the Dam Busters Raid. In March this year, the UK, Canada and Australia remembered the first sortie by the Lancaster Bomber with the special event call signs GB80LAN, VE80LAN and VK80LAN. The organisers of that event have been asked if we could do the same for the Dam Busters. As there were crews from New Zealand, the invitation to join in the event has been forwarded. If you need more information, please get in touch with Robert using email vk80lam at iinet.net.au. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Yota. Now Alec, VK2APC. 
An eight-year-old is one of the youngest hams in the U.S. state of Arkansas. Just last month, Silas Kreiner, aged eight, passed his amateur radio exam. He's now waiting for FCC to issue his license permitting up to 1,500 watts output. I know exactly how he feels after passing, which I did when I was 11 years old, even if I can't use a kilowatt plus. Silas is the son of radio amateurs Eric, Kilo Foxtrot 5, Kilo Victor Echo, and Florence, Kilo Foxtrot 5, Oscar Bravo Uniform. Silas's technician license is the entry level license in the USA. It permits 200 watts in the parts of the 3.5, 7, 21, and the 28 megahertz bands and up to 1,500 watts on all amateur allocations above 30 megahertz. The Jonesboro Sun newspaper, reporting on his achievement, said, Silas was excited when he passed his technician class license and is waiting to be able to start transmitting. I wanted to help the community in case of a natural disaster, like a tornado or an earthquake, Silas said, because they are scary and I want to help people with that. He said that he became interested in hamming after he watched his parents on their radios, which he will get to use soon as well. For VK1 WIA National News, I'm Alec, VK2 APC in Sydney. Now back over to you, Bruce. Thanks, Alec. I'm Bruce, VK3 Triple F in not so sunny Bendigo. This is VK1 WIA. All points of contacts from today's news stories are to be found in print when you read the web editions. www.wia.org.au. 2022 social scene. What's in store for the rest of the year? VK2 Oxley Region Amateur Radio Club's Field Day, June 11 and 12. VK5, the Australian Fox Hunting Championship and the Sir Convention. Mount Gambier, the Queen's Birthday Weekend in June. VK7, Miana Hamfest, Saturday, 19 October. Now I've got your attention. Sorry about that, VK7. Of course, it's the 19th of November for the Miana Hamfest. Now, thanks to our dedicated band of broadcast volunteers who utilise their time and equipment in bringing you this weekly broadcast. Of course, we couldn't do it without you. The purpose of WIA News? To rapidly provide news of interest to WIA-affiliated clubs and active amateurs residing in Australia and the globe. We strongly encourage membership in the Wireless Institute of Australia and participation in the activities of local clubs. Opinions expressed in WIA News are those of the writers who submit material and do not necessarily reflect those of the rebroadcasters nor the national WIA, but if they are broadcast, they are done so in the spirit in which they were submitted. Of course, what you read and what you hear here may be reproduced in whole or in part in any form, but a credit to WIA News wouldn't go astray. And with that, I'll see you next week. Walk softly, I'm Graham VK4BB. From Australia, this has been the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. Courtesy of Bevan, VK5BD's ATV and YouTube channel, this has been WIA National News. We're back now, live and local, and your voice, your callbacks. And don't forget, tick like.